gathering in Christ, sharing his love. And we are here to love, listen, learn, and lead. We're glad that you joined us here at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida, on this, our 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We pray that your hearts will be lifted up, that you will be filled with love and joy. Please remember to call someone on the phone after the service. Our Christian calling is always to reach out to the other. So the love that you have been shown during this service, we pray that you would uh, continue that love and share it with someone on the telephone after you're done watching the service. Our virtual coffee hour continues every Sunday at 11. Members, the email link is in your email. All are welcome to join us on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, for the last three weeks now on Ed Tuesday, uh, we've had outdoor communion in our parking lot. Please come uh, as you are and enjoy communion service in the comfort of and safety of your car uh, while listening to it on your car radio. Worship will continue uh, online for the foreseeable future. We're still uncertain about the numbers going up, so we're going to make sure that everybody stays as safe and healthy as possible by continuing our online worship. Now will you please join me at the font as together we confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. It is, is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sunday after Pentecost is found in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, so that we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I have to admit I was sitting at my desk the other day trying to write a sermon for this Sunday, and as sometimes happens, I developed a very serious case of writer's block. The words just weren't coming. And then it occurred to me that this wasn't my sermon anyway, it was God's sermon, that there were words that God wanted to say through me to you, that all I had to do was listen to God. So I sat back, got quiet for a while, tried to put away the busyness of my life, and thought, okay, now we can do this. I know any of you who have ever come up to me after service or on the telephone and I've said, hey, pastor, that was a good sermon. You know that sometimes I'll tell you, hey, it's not my sermon, it's God's sermon. He just spoke it through me. I'm simply a vessel. So after all this, the question came to me, what does God want us to know today? Well, first and foremost, every day, God wants to know that God loves us more than we can ever believe, more than we can ever imagine. His grace to us and His love are overflowing. But in light of the Gospel text today, there's another thing that God wants us to know. He wants us to be prepared. Now, be prepared has become quite the catchphrase around Gloria Day over the last couple months. That's what we call our capital campaign. Unfortunately, uh, the spirit of be prepared didn't catch on too, too well, too broadly, or too deeply, and we've fallen far short of our goal for that campaign. But it's just like in the story. Five bridesmaids were wise, five were foolish. The wise ones had obviously set the example by carrying extra oil, but the foolish ones, true to their own foolishness, didn't carry any. The example that was set by the five wise bridesmaids is like the example that's been set for the Christian life over the last 2,000 years. Originally set by Jesus, set by all of those in the Christian faith who have gone before us, and hopefully now by us. Are we following Christ's example? Well, I think that as we find in the bridesmaid's story, some of us do and some of us don't. But thank God for the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ that even when we fall short of the goal, we're still being loved. God knows that most of us are just like those foolish bridesmaids and we end up being, a, as my father would say, a day late or a dollar short. Or as has come into usage here, uh, in recent years, uh, a few fries short of a Happy Meal. 
Human shortcomings are nothing new. Not today, not in Jesus' time, and not before Jesus. We've heard from the book of Amos. Now, Amos was your basic non-prophet, even though they refer to Amos as a prophet. Amos was a shepherd, not a devout man of God, who was well-versed in the scriptures or Hebrew tradition, or a learned teacher of the Torah, but God chose Amos, this shepherd, to take the word of God to the people. Now understand that Israel and Judah were experiencing a time of great prosperity and peace. Unfortunately, the wealth of the nation was not shared amongst all the people. The rich didn't take care of the poor. And that was something that was a requirement of Jewish law and tradition. The rich had turned away from God, and now instead of worshiping God, they were worshiping idols, not the least of which was their own wealth. Not only that, but the people had deceived themselves into thinking that their worship, their rituals, were enough, that the offerings that they brought, that the music that they played and sang made them acceptable and justified in God's sight. And we hear the phrase, the day of the Lord, in the text from Amos this morning. The people of Israel thought that the day of the Lord was supposed to be a joyous, a glorious day where Israel would be raised up to head all of the nations around it. Unfortunately, in that joy, they had lost track of the true spirit of worship, which was and is giving ourselves to others, not in lavish rituals. So Amos warned them about God's intent on the day of the Lord. God would be coming not to lift them up, but to judge them. I think in this case, Amos could have borrowed the famous line from the Pogo comic strip, we have met the enemy and they are us. Now down through the years, there have been a lot of shortcomings in humankind and there have been some people who have stayed vigilant, have stayed prepared. And for them, the day of the Lord will not be retribution and judgment. It will be a day of joy and happiness. But as with everything, as with this COVID-19, where we've waited and waited and prayed and hoped for an end to it, the waiting starts to wear on us. It's hard to wait for an extended period of time. It takes patience and it takes preparation. The world has waited 2,000 years for the return of Christ. And sometimes the, all that waiting just seems to be in vain. The early church thought that Jesus was going to return in a few years, in their lifetime. And so some of the early believers were very super vigilant and they gave up everything else that they had in their lives. On the other hand, some of them got tired of waiting and just went back to their old lives. And then there were those who were riding the fence. They were in between. And I ask you, where are we today in our watching and waiting for the Lord? I would think that at the very least, we're sort of that in-between group. We have learned over the generations to wait, hopefully, not anxiously, for the return of Christ. We look forward to the day of the Lord, and we try our best to be prepared. We try our best to be faithful in our waiting, watching, and in the meantime, in our service to the Lord. I hope this closing story will remind us of the value of staying faithful the year was 1780. In New England, there was an eerie darkness at midday that frightened many people. At noon, it was as dark as early night. The birds, as confused as the people, sang a final twilight song and fluttered off into the evening dusk. The cows came meandering home from the pasture and the chickens came home to roost. Religious men 
fell on their knees and begged a final blessing before the end came. In Hartford, Connecticut, the state legislature was in session and someone moved adjournment thinking that the day of judgment had come. But then one legislator stood up and he said, I am against adjournment. The day of judgment either is approaching or it is not. If it is not, then there is no cause for adjournment. If it is, I choose to be found doing my duty. I wish, therefore, that candles be brought. And the rest of the legislature approved his motion. Have you been faithful in your service to God? Have you been hopefully waiting and watching for the return of Christ? Have you been faithful in your service to others? And if the bridegroom were to show up today, would you be found doing your duty? Amen. Let justice roll down like waters over this world. 
reign over courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Be with those who suffer from any disease of body, mind, or soul. Especially Jan, Richard, Anne, Fred, Tycho, Father Charles, Margie, Gracia, Ray and Roseanne, and those we name in our hearts or on our lips. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and Immortal One, we pray for the, in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with those who might be watching this video with you. Uh, please, after the service, call someone on the phone and share that same peace. At this time, we would normally collect our offering, but these are anything but normal times. We do thank all of those who have sent their tithes and offerings into the church office or have given through the portal on our website. Uh, for those of you who have been negatively impacted by COVID-19, we continue to keep you in our prayers. Savior and Spirit 
be with you today and always. Amen. as ourselves. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The year was 1780. In New England, there was an eerie darkness at midday that frightened many people. At noon, it was as dark as early night. The birds, as confused as the people, sang the final twilight song and fluttered off into the evening dusk. Cows came meandering home from the pasture and chickens came home to roost. Religious men fell on their knees and begged a final blessing before the end came. In Hartford, Connecticut, the state legislature was in session, and someone moved adjournment, thinking that the day of judgment had come. But then a legislator stood up and said, I am against adjournment. The day of judgment either is approaching or it is not. If it is not, there is no cause for adjournment. If it is, I choose to be found doing my duty. I wish, therefore, that candles be brought. And the legislature approved his request. And I ask you, have you been faithful in service to God? Have you been faithful in service to others? And also, if the bridegroom were to come today, would he find you at your post? Amen. was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your full Holy Spirit, so that by this holy meal we might know the unity that we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us join our hearts and minds together as we eat this feast. Please reverently take the wafer, and if you're in a car with another person, please feel free to commune that other person. This is the body of Christ given for you, eating all of it. is the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink ye all of it. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray that through it we might be strengthened in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. At this time, before you all leave, I'd like to uh, just let you know that I will be standing up at the entrance, uh, and I'd like to just uh, share a sign of peace with all of you as you leave. So give me just a second to get up there. Um, if you have any comments about what you've experienced here today, please let the church office know. Thank you and God bless.